Hey. So I was going to do another video about my trip to Tijuana because a lot of people with Lyme um, ask about that on a lot of the websites. So um, first off, I am doing this video from the tent that I live in right now. And if we get to the end of this story, I'll explain a little bit why I'm in the tent. But my next video will go into that in more detail. Um, but it's, it's a lovely tent. Um, anyway, so I went to Tijuana in June of 2022. Um, and it was just coming off of some COVID restrictions. So I didn't have as many restrictions. Um, and so I went online and I requested an appointment and some people told me it'd take a while to get in, I guess, with COVID, it was taking a lot longer, but by the time I applied, um, I think I heard back and they could have got me in within a couple months, but it was too early for me. I, I needed to wait until I didn't have to work. I didn't work a lot, but, um, so the school year was over so I could find a place for my kids to be with having to worry about carpools and kids. I have six kids. So I was trying to think, make things a little less complicated when my husband would be home as well. And so I made a request and they got me in and they say to plan on three full days of treatment. So we need to make sure you're there. Um, like I flew in the night before. So that way when you start the next morning, you need to be there and check in like at 9 a.m. So you need to make sure you're already settled in Tijuana at that point. And then give yourself like some time to rest. So when you're done on that third day, you don't want to get on an airplane that night, you know? So I plan on going the next afternoon. So, um, I'm already forgetting things. So that's why I took some notes. Um, so you plan on those three full days and then also they have, they will send you about a month before they will send you an email trying to give you more specific information. And for me, I wanted to know every single thing way before that. And so I, I had messaged a few, um, friends that had been there and got some good information from them, but they have a schedule, a shuttle that you schedule ahead of time. And it's free if it's just you and you're going to the clinic bio med bio advanced medical clinic with Dr. Calzada in Tijuana. And so this shuttle is great because it gets you through the border faster than anybody else. You'll see everybody else waiting in lines and everything. And so with the shuttle, they just kind of open the door. They kind of see how many people you have. I don't believe they even looked at my passport the way in, just on the way out. And they check to make sure you're not bringing any fruit or anything you know, important that you're smuggling out. Um, but they were really good about it. Um, you'll also notice a lot of people trying to sell things to you through the windows on their little carts and stuff. And I kept looking really interested and the driver told me if I look interested, they won't leave us alone. <laughs> so if you're not serious about buying things, don't make eye contact. But I really wanted to buy some things because it made me feel bad. I wanted to support some of the people, but I didn't really know how to do it through a moving van. So, um, but I thought next time I do it, I'll, I'll do it. Um, you also need to make sure you get your lab work done before you go, or you can get it done there, but you need to get it done before your appointment that day. So if you're, you start checking in at 9 a.m., you need to get your lab work done like 7.30 that morning in their lab that's like in the basement or something. But I knew my insurance would pay for it. And if you do it there, it was like $250. So I figured I'd get it done free with my insurance before I went. And they give you a list of labs they want you to get done. So um, that's the route that I went with that. And then they give you on this little email some links to where you can get a hotel to stay at. And I chose the Fairfield. Um, and they, they give you a good discount and more rooms were available too. If you go through the Fairfield website, you can't find the room sometimes, but if you go through the Calzada website, I got a discount and an available um, room. And I liked the Fairfield because it was like a three minute walk to the clinic. Um, and to be honest, people were afraid of me going cause it's Tijuana and it seemed a little scary. And a couple of people I knew that went, they told me that they felt safe there. 
and I trusted these people's judgment. And but th this is, I don't fly on my own. This is only the second time I ever flew anywhere in my life and I did it on my own. So I think the airplane and getting lost and all of that stuff gave me a lot more anxiety than Tijuana itself. Um, and I didn't feel scared so much as being there. Um, but there's a different language being spoken and you feel a little out of place. Um, but the hotel gave me, um, free breakfast, which is a great breakfast. I don't have to worry about, um, paying for food for breakfast and everything. And then, um, at night when I'd get back home, I, they would bring, um, I would order dinner and they'd bring it up to me. And so I thought that was nice because I was tired and they were really nice and their food was really good. Um, pretty good quality. And the prices were cheaper than probably Utah where I came from. So, um, that was nice. And everybody at the hotel was really nice. Actually, the first day I was really nervous about just walking around the Tijuana streets to figure out where the clinic was. Cause I didn't know anything about Tijuana streets or buildings. And I tried to do a Google maps and it, it really confused me. So this cute little lady at the desk, um, she actually walked me there my first time and just one of the hotel workers. And so I thought that was super going out of her way. And I liked, um, the staff that was there. Um, so the first day in clinic to make sure I didn't forget anything. Um, you're supposed to do a check-in like at 9 AM. And I didn't realize how many people would be there during this check-in thing. And so I just waited and I waited and I waited and <laughs> that's the thing that frustrated me the most was waiting because I'm, we're sick people. I, 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 it was hard for me to be waiting around sitting in a, a lounge room for that long. And by the time I was one of the only ones left, I just lost all dignity and I just lay down on the couch that was there. And apparently I had to wait a little bit longer for that because Dr. Calzada usually gives a lecture like every, like, every three days for the, the new people come in every three days and he couldn't do it that day. So at 10 o'clock when he would have been doing a lecture that I would have been listening to, I was just waiting on a couch, basically like sleeping on a couch. Um, it was up to three hours. It wasn't like, Oh, I waited half an hour. I was getting impatient. I was there on that couch for three hours and I, I felt like I was paying enough money and I was coming a far away that I, I shouldn't have to be waiting three hours. Like tell me to go back to my hotel and, um, wait there or something. Right. So we were waiting to get into the doctor who would then kind of make your schedule, see what kind of things, treatments he wanted you to have. So I finally got in the doctor and I felt like I was just out of it. Maybe they want to really see how sick you are before you go in there. <laughs> Cause at first I was kind of like, oh, I'm going to be, you know, nice and alert. And be, I don't know. Like I just didn't care at that point. I was so tired. I needed food. I needed to rest and I was just starting the day. So not the, the best start to that. So I'm at the doctor and you, you sit and visit with them. I was, it was like an hour, really nice guy. And they decided what treatments they wanted me to do for the days I was there. And then when you come each day, those three days, they give you a paper that has like your name and what time and like for your day, the massage or stem cells or whatever it is. I feel like they signed me up for just a lot of stuff and I don't entirely believe it was necessary. I'm not going to say I didn't like a pedicure, but did I fly to Tijuana and pay thousands of dollars for a pedicure? Not necessary. Right. Um, so they call it a medical pedicure because you know, you get bacteria in your toenails and anyway, they cleaned my feet and it felt really nice and soft and I wasn't going to complain, but, um, did it cure Lyme? No, but, um, and so that was kind of on the, the floor level. It's kind of like the beauty spa one. And then you also get a massage on that, that level. Um, and it's called lymphatic massage, which all I could say, it was like one of the crappiest massages I've had because it, it just kind of moves, you know, flows your blood. It, I felt like she was barely touching me for like an hour and it just like rubbing my legs. So I wasn't impressed with that, but I'm sure there's purpose to it. But, um, we also had some things that I didn't understand. I felt like they thought that I should just understand all these treatments cause they didn't really explain things. And I'm trying to ask like, what exactly is the purpose of this? You know, like I'm not against it. I just kind of want to know the science behind it or 
And to be honest, a lot of the, the cute little nurses, they were so sweet and loving and they brought me a blanket and they were kind and, you know, attentive and everything, but they didn't know the best English. And so some of them didn't know how to explain some things to me. And I really wish I knew Spanish. Um, one treatment was radionics, was like this magnetic therapy. Um, they just did it. They just kind of walk in, they set you up and I'm like, I can explain a little bit more to me. And so some of them did. And later on, I was supposed to get some report on the radionics and everything it meant to my body. And no one ever sent me an email later on and I asked them for it and they never sent it, but that was whatever at that point. Um, so I, one thing we got the, the I don't know what it's called, the, the basically the colon cleanse. And like a little too much information, but people need to warn you about that situation because, um, I don't really feel it was as awkward as I felt like I was trying to be nice and relaxed about it, but they basically put a hose up your butt and they clean you out and they clean you out and just goes on and on. They massage in your stomach. Like I literally, like a day later, I felt like something had been like damaged in like my lower abdomen because the pushing and everything. Um, I felt like serious, like internal bruising. And I was like, what just happened? I, I was supposed to be getting better and I got worse, but it didn't last long, but it kind of worried me a little bit. Um, but after you get this colon treatment done, you sit on the bathroom they're like, Oh, you're going to expect some more water to come out. And I'm like, okay. So yeah, you sit down, more water comes, you sit for a little bit, you let it empty and then you leave the place and you're going down to the elevator and all of a sudden you feel more coming and I'm like, what the heck? Right? So rushing to bathrooms for the next 45 minutes, like trying to not totally like wet my pants. Cause it's just water that's coming out of you. And it was, it was creating an awkward situation. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I wish I would have, I don't know, worn a diaper or sat on the toilet for half an hour. I don't know what I could have done in that situation, but, um, it was awkward. And I had to like go get lunch and then I left my lunch because I had to go to the bathroom really fast. You know, there's bathrooms pretty close, but so that was interesting. Um, and then each day you go and get the, in like the IV room and I'm trying to think of one thing look like Mountain Dew, but it was like a vitamin type IV and you do like, um, the IV stem cells at one point where they just put the stem cells through you. But then other days you go in and the doctor does like an injection. He did it in my neck and my wrists and my knees of these stem cells. And the first day you come, they take the blood and then mix it with the stem cells. So it's, and then they use that for the stem cells later on. I don't remember the science of all that, but I know that it's pretty unique there and they have more stem cells than other people and it's supposed to be awesome. So I did end up getting that lecture with Dr. Calzada just the next day. So he gives a lot of really good information and I remember as he's talking, I mean, there's only like 25 of us in the room. It felt pretty personal, but, um, like I remember I was like trying not to cry the whole time and look stupid, but to have a doctor talk about Lyme disease, like it was a real thing. I mean, I'd had 20 doctors before I got diagnosed with Lyme disease in Utah and just the way they talked about it and that, you know, it wasn't crazy. And it was just nice to be in good company like that, where, um, doctors were listening to you and were trying to treat treat you for something that other doctors had um, patronized you for. So, um, I really liked listening to him. Um, you also meet with a nutritionist for an hour and I really enjoyed her visit. They kind of like, you do this little thing where it kind of tests like a bunch of things. I don't know, <laughs> dehydration and muscle mass and, you know, and decided where the bulk of my fat was. And, um, and that kind of helps you create like a nutrition plan. And I was already doing pretty good with nutrition, but she mentioned a few things that I could change with like eating oatmeal every morning that maybe I could add more nuts and a protein to it and not just have, um, just the oatmeal itself, you know, to spike my blood sugar in the morning. So, and then they print some recipes out for you. They talk with you and, um, I was just trying to remember, she said something that, that she told me to have more grace for myself. And I thought that was just great for coming from a nutritionist that to not stress myself about being perfect, about 
the food I ate and that sometimes when you stress so much about eating the wrong food that it's going to make you sick because it has inflammation or it's just like sometimes that stress creates more inflammation in your body than the than that bad food itself and just to have more grace for myself and be patient and so I enjoyed her visit um very down to earth people there the doctors and nurses everyone that you work with um I'm trying to think oh the one thing I didn't love was that besides the waiting I'll talk more about the waiting later too but they want you to have um to bring at this time they did for your first time to bring fifteen hundred dollars in cash minimum to pay with and I don't know about you but traveling into a different country by myself um with cash made me really nervous I had a money um belt strapped on me but then when you're at the airport they see that and then you have to like explain what it is and then they have to go put you in a, I had to go in a, another room on the way home like they had to like they didn't strip search me they had to be like you know, remove it nicely and show them what was inside and everything and they were really respectful about it the San Diego airport um, was particularly really great um, when I left the Salt Lake Airport not so great they were just really rude there about everything but um, to think oh and the the thing I love the most when I was there was they have a restaurant um, on the top floor and they have really great food it's like organic and tasty and you can go out to this door and just kind of look above the city and it was probably 68 70 ish degrees at the time that I went and so it was really the only time I got sunshine and a fresh air and so I just like to go sit out there on a chair and just kind of because you have the schedule and sometimes like the first day the schedule like kind of went right along plan like nine o'clock go and get your massage and you know this and you'd go different places but I don't know what they were planning because I need to eat <laughs> and rest and so I knew it was gonna be a long day but there was times where one thing was behind and then another one got moved up and it was two o'clock and I hadn't had anything to eat and I was ready to pass out and I was just feeling like crap and then at one point I said but well, for my next one they're like oh you're ready to go over to they're ready for you at this new room and I'm like I have to go and get some food and I'm like why would you not plan that in like I feel like health is important food is important you want to go do these IVs on me make sure that you know you have time for people to eat um so there was one point where I just remember just being so hungry and tired and the last day is, was the worst because I went and got an IV and I had to wait for the doctor's appointment to see me. It was kind of my very last day. He was getting the meds ready for me and I was finishing up at five and I sat in that chair, not even hooked up anymore, but ready, waiting for the doctor for an hour and a half. And the whole time I kept thinking, okay, the kitchen closes at five and I really want to eat. I'm planning the meal that I'm going to get. I'm so hungry. And then I'm like, well, he'll be here any minute, you know, cause he's supposed to be here like 20 minutes ago. And so I waited and then I'm like, well, maybe I just go down and get something and then have them hold it on the heater for me or something, you know? And cause they, they were really kind and they did that for me one time. And then I waited and I waited and the kitchen was closed and I'm like, okay, well I'll just get something from the hotel. And I was there for a ha an hour and a half, like just waiting in my chair, like curled up sleeping. I was the only person left in there. I'm kind of, I've got to a point where I was like, did they forget me? <laughs> like, and there's like these nurses that were kind of wandering back and forth doing their thing. I'm like, they're ready to go for the day. And I'm like, lady still over here sitting in a, you know, in this recliner, um, waiting to talk to the doctor. And finally he calls me in all nice. And like, he was a nice guy. And at this point again, I was like, why do we keep meeting when I'm exhausted? Why am I always waiting for you? Like you have an appointment at a certain time. I show up on time. Don't make me wait an hour to three hours. Right. Especially when you're sick people. Like, so, um, we get in there and it's kind of just kind of tells me kind of what we've been doing and what he thinks I should continue doing and um, kind of annoyed at this point for making me wait but um, you know that whole hangry feeling and one other thing the first time that I saw met with him that first hour one thing I really wanted I was looking forward to was how they do your the blood test where they take your your blood and they look right under the, the black light right there so you could see the spirochetes um, swimming around and I really 
because the Lyme testing is so inconsistent and I've had a couple tests done before and none of them were like blaring like you have Lyme, I really wanted that like confirmation, like see the spirochetes and so I could feel like this is it. Like I'm not, because the doctors and specialists had run so many other tests. I just really wanted to make sure I was working on the right thing, right? And no one, he never ever told me really like, you definitely have Lyme, this is what we're working on. I felt like it was like this generic thing that they do with everybody. We're going to give you all these treatments. We're going to, which is all good stuff. We're going to give you these stem cells and we're going to clean you out. We're going to give you massage. We're going to do the radionics and the magnetic therapy and all these IV, you know, vitamin treatments. Everybody can benefit from that. A lot of people there, there was two other Lyme patients there, but some of them had MS, some of them had Parkinson's, some of them just had, um, injuries from like sports and stuff. They were getting stem cells. So, and cancer, like it, it brings a lot of people there. So I kind of felt like it was just like, this is what we run through everybody when we go. And we looked at, you know, he puts this big screen in front of him and looks at my blood and you could see that like, I'm not, I'm not even going to remember the, the exact doctor words here, but the, um, but my cells, like, you know, they weren't shaped smooth, like they should have been. Like, obviously there was some issues going on and, and he was mentioning, oh, this looks, you know, like dehydration. This looks like, you know, this and, and he's like, maybe that thing right there looked kind of like a baby spirochete, like possibly we found nothing that would be like spirochetes swimming all over the place. And he just kept looking and over at different areas. And he's like, that's possibly like a baby one. And I was like, okay. So I never got that confirmation that I wanted. I was kind of like, mm, that was fun. That's kind of interesting to see, but I never really got anything really. So, um, so, but I know it's not a miracle. You're not going to leave there feeling healed. Some people do feel more immediate stuff, but for me, I thought oh, I'm really excited to look forward to going home, getting some rest that I was told to take easy for a couple weeks by some people that, you know, you might feel worse as you detox and, um, as I herks and everything. And so I wasn't exactly sure what to plan, but I kind of just made a schedule of doing nothing for the next couple weeks. So I fly home the next day. I rested a little bit. The shuttle was supposed to come pick us up at a certain time and I could not get a hold of them. And that was a little frightening that I was going to miss my flight. And then some other people were on the same flight as me. And so they helped track them down and they had the wrong time. And so that was a lot of fun. But, um, the one thing I like about the shuttle though, is that they send you a picture of the driver and of the license plate. And so you don't get on some random shuttle. It was nice to feel safe like that. And they were nice guys. So the first guy that must've been new apparently, because the other people in the van had been to Tijuana plenty of times. And, um, he was parking some random scary places because he was on Google maps and he couldn't figure out where our hotels were. We had four different drops, to different hotels. And I don't know if he was new to the place or what, but he kept stopping and asking directions and like, and parking in some scary areas where I, you know, was like, let's not hang out here. But it's supposed to be the safer part of Tijuana where this building is that little walk, that three minute walk. I loved seeing the cute little vendor families. Like, you know, there's a couple vendors and, you know, setting up their shops and the grandmas, you know, making their guacamole and, and cutting things for the day. And, you know, I enjoyed the area there. Um, and the people there, they were really nice. Um, and I felt safe walking there. I mean, I just didn't feel safe because I was somewhere by myself in a new place and out of my element, but I probably would have felt that anywhere. Um, and then I'm trying to think if I ever forgot anything. So this is the problem is I came home and I was looking forward to the stem cells starting to work, that the pain in my joints would start lessening. I mean, when I was my third day there, the doctor was like, do you feel different? I'm like, no, I just, it's like, I just really got a shot yesterday. You know, I don't feel any different pain. I'm like, I'm just tired because I'm here all day long and I'm not resting or, or maybe I feel a little better some days because. I'm not at home doing cleaning a house and making dinner and taking care of six kids because I'm laying in a hotel a lot, you know? So once I get back to routine, I'll know what to expect. So I came home and I rested a lot. And then the next week, within a few days, maybe, yeah, within a week to less than a week, I started feeling horrible, horrible. And I was like, did that just make me worse? Like, is it just herxing still? And, um, frustrated. 
not quite sure what was going on. And then I had a routine doctor appointment with my doctor here in Utah and just the protocol that he's been doing before I had left. And my next surprise in this journey was the whole mold test that we had done two weeks before I left for Tijuana. We had it done just part of a protocol and it came back so high that it said I shouldn't enter my house. So being in Tijuana for a week away from my house and then coming home to this mold exposure just kind of like threw my body into a whole other place. And so that's why I got so much worse. So I can't tell you if Tijuana benefited me or not because my body just got this whole new exposure and probably why I was feeling so crappy before and probably why I wasn't healing well before I had done a mold test in 2020 that scored a four on the hurts me, which is beautiful. And I wish I could get a four. Um, and this time it was a 22 and red, like do not enter if you are special with Lyme and this, you know, this inflammatory conditions that I have. And so I moved out into a tent, um, until we could figure it out. And there I remain. I got a new tent though. It's a bigger tent. It's about eight feet tall as well. Um, I'll talk about my tent journey later, but, um, I've been through a few mold remediations and when I'm out on the tent, I start improving and I feel a lot better. And when I come in the house, the few times I've been inside when they said it was safe to be in it, I wake up feeling like I've been poisoned, the pain, um, the fogginess, the migraines, everything. Um, we can't find the source of the mold. My family's in there and they're fine. I don't know what it's doing to them long term, to be honest. I mean, maybe they have a headache every once in a while because of it. But for me, it's, it's pretty horrible enough that I'm living in a tent and it's, you know, 10 inches of snow outside. And, you know, it's been 10 degrees at night, but I have this cute little heater. Um, so I'm warm, but it's not ideal. And I've been here since July and it is January. So, um, I'm going on I'm past six months now of living out here as I'm, I'm on my deck in a tent. <laughs> um, so I'll talk more about that later, but so my next journey is Lyme to mold toxicity and my mold journey, which is not over. So I, maybe I should just wait until I find the ending, but there might not be an ending anytime soon. So, um, post any questions you might have about Tijuana that maybe I missed and maybe I'll have an answer to it. I do know that I asked some people that simple things like, um, it's cold in the building. So even though you're in Mexico, it's not a warm place. Like I was like cold. I left Salt Lake city at like 99 degrees and came to Tijuana in less than 70 degrees. And so I was wearing sweater and jeans most all the time. So, um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, we're glad to help.